Kitty, are you gonna be okay? And then Kini died. And then Kini had pain plan. <laughs> now he's choking to death. <laughs> okay. I'm good. Hello everyone and welcome to TTV Reviews. Because I don't think we actually have a proper name for this. I guess TTV yes, we... Special Legend of Chiba coverage. Kind of like what we did with RVB. Maybe. Meso, by the time I'm done laughing at this, we will have a proper episode name thing. But this isn't an episode. This is a special. <clears throat> but 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 every other special has been an episode. It's a special so anyway, episode. Today, we come to you two days after the Legends of Chima TV show aired on Cartoon Network to bring you some discussion, some commentary, and mainly some criticism of the show. For those that aren't aware, it was a one-hour one hour compilation, and it consisted of two episodes, The Legends of Chima and The Great Story. And what they did, they led into it by showing the final two episodes of Ninjago, and then they directly cut to the premiere of Chima. Now, real quick, to start things off, I'm going to give a brief rundown of how it started. Obviously, if you're listening to this and you care whatsoever about it, spoiler alert... There will be plot spoilers in this episode, so, you know, don't watch till you've watched Chiba. I'll post a link in, a, in the description to where you can watch both episodes online on a third-party site. So, here we go. The episode starts with Eris, the eagle, flying, and it's a nice scenery shot. There's some cool music. You get to see Mount Kavora, I think it's called, the floating island. Like and then suddenly... Ares is shot down from the sky by a cage that is fired from a cannon. It entraps her. She falls and looks around, and there are people converging on her position, and she spots a familiar face, and she calls out, Cragger, what are you doing? And he says something along the lines of, Oh, nothing much. Just uh, attacking the lions, stealing the precious... I'm, st <coughs> I'm sneezing. <laughs> It's untight. <laughs> <laughs> attacking, oh, nothing much. Attacking the lion, stealing the precious chi, and avenging my parents. What are you up to? And she's like, trying to convince you to stop this, or something like that, she didn't, before someone she didn't gets hurt. <laughs> and he's like, oh, about that. Too late. And they I, cover I have the back two of the things vehicle, and then the vehicles up. converge on the lion temple, <laughs> and then the title card rolls. And that's the beginning. You 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 screwed up two uh, things there. For one, well, actually, no, you didn't screw up one. It is a cage. It looks like a net, but no, they literally shot an entire cage out of a cannon and somehow <laughs> managed to trap a lady in it, even though it was closed clearly when they fired it. And even though, and she then, fly. and then he didn't say anything about the chi. He said, "Oh, nothing much. Just saying a strangely bionicle slash Greg-like monologue and being incredibly relaxed about being <laughs> the bad guy in the story." Why? What are you up to? Uh, I don't understand how it's Greg-like dialogue. It just, it's because it's like, you know what? Go read some Vazon quotes, plucks. Or Makuda quotes, for that matter. Makuda? Yeah, I have a thousand ways to kill you, and 941 of them hurt. That is <laughs> not Anyways. half as bad as Krager's. Not, oh, not, it's not, it's not, it's no, but that, that was bad. pretty bad. It's, slur. it's not the fact that it's bad, it's just, like, similar styles. It's, yeah, it's how. similar to... And that, LJ, is why you are just you. Yeah, well, at least I finished stories. No, I'm kidding. Oh, oh, anyway, go on. Right. <laughs> Back to what we were talking about before. Then we cut into our a, 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 like flip of our protagonist, of all, doing something. I'm not entirely sure what it was or what he was looking for. He I, was I, searching for his harness, quote unquote. Okay. So he searches for his harness. He like knocks down some like punching bag named Sir Punch a lot, and he likes Spars with him briefly, like kicks him in the face a couple times. 
then magically finds his harness exactly where he last left it. And then he runs out very choppily, very bad animation at that part. <laughs> and he meets with a bunch of people in the Lion Temple. It's apparently his Age of Becoming ceremony, which means he's old enough to plug chi. And his dad's there, and he's about to, you know, plug it, and then suddenly, attack on the Lion Temple. Alarms are raised, you see the vehicles converge on the temple. There's an explosion which knocks Laval's chi from his hand, and it rolls, and who picks it up? But Cragger. Laval screams out to him, runs away, Laval gives chase, hops on his speed door. A chase scene ensues that eventually culminates in a joust, which knocks both of them off the speed or. They, like, fight for a bit, and then Cragger's helmet is knocked off, and Laval's like, Cragger, is that you? And then it cuts into an obnoxiously long flashback sequence, which begins my first problem. The pacing in this special is atrocious. Everything about yeah. it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything about the pacing is horrible. Keita, like, you had a good suggestion earlier. What they could have done was show everything up until, like, show this first part of the flashback they're about to cut into, and then actually start the episode, rather than yeah. start it well, with no explanation and then go into a flashback. Yeah, because basically the way it works is you go from present time, and then there's a little... Well, I mean, it's not too spoilerific. It's kind of obvious. There's the Cragger and Laval were once friends. Spoilerific yep. thing that if you've looked into Chima at all, you already knew that. Mm-hmm. Because it's explained in every bio ever. But anyways, um, there's that whole reveal. But yet, immediately after that, it says some time ago. <laughs> or a long time. Or a long time ago, sorry. Even though it was only like, I don't know. A week. <laughs> yep. And um, the show goes on for, like, the rest of the episode and a good half of the second episode from that time point. Is the flash? So there was... Yeah, this is the flashback. And then there's, like, flashbacks within flashbacks and fast-forwards within the flashback. Yeah, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. LJ, what are your thoughts on the pacing? <clears throat> Absolutely horrible. It's okay. just too quick. Yeah. There's, there's really nothing. Even the animation had pacing issues because you'd see uh, minifigures like scramble across the floor yeah. or something. <laughs> that, that was what and I thought it, so funny. It wouldn't look like they're walking. They just they're, they it looks like the walking animation is playing, but they're kind of just on like sliding roller along. blades. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like, <laughs> I thought the animation of the show overall was pretty good, but there were some parts that were very, very... It was very clearly bad. Lego animation. Yeah. Very obvious. So, well, they've done good animation before. I mean, uh, Ninjago had very good animation. Which is why it's so jarring. I haven't actually done this, but apparently what everyone's saying is they led into Ninjago with... Well, they led into Chima with the last two episodes of Ninjago, arguably the best of the series. And if you watch that... And then compare Chima, not just in storytelling, but in, like, animation quality. It's such a jump. It's not even funny. And if I wasn't already disappointed enough with Chima, I would go do that. But I don't want to make it even worse for myself, so. Basically, as Kini just explained, they cut and do it, and it's like, oh, they're friends. Apparently, all the other tribes were friends with them, too, to some degree. You're introduced to a variety of one-dimensional stereotypes of characters. Bladvix, the sleepy bear, Rogoff, whoa, 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 the stupid whoa, 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 Meso, Meso. Hmm. One-dimensional is too forgiving. Yeah, they don't even have that. More like 0 0.13579 dimensional. Well, oh, the bears, they're sleepy. Oh, the rhinos, they're stupid. Oh, the, uh, the wolves, they're stupid but violent. The eagles, they're like eagle-tastic. The only eagle we get to see <laughs> is Ares, and she's a moron. So and yes, there's that. And I, 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 I want to go on a spiel on yeah. that one. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, okay, These okay. These characters are introduced, and you see their personalities, but Kini here has been reading the bios on the website, and there, he's noticed a couple startling things. Okay, so this is... I, I decided to read up on Chima just because whatever. I, I'm not... 
really interested in Lego anymore, but I was like, hey, you know what? I want to see what this is actually supposed to be about and all of the little things they didn't put into the show. And, uh, okay, well, we may as well explain a bit of Eris's personality first before I go into what she's actually like. She (laughs) She will sit in her motorbike trying to pull a ripcord as a person is charging towards her, ready to wound and or kill her when she has wings and she can, well, obviously, even if she did not have wings, she could just hop out of the motorbike. But ignore that for a second and say, okay, I can't get out of the motorbike. I can't sit. I can't get out by normal methods. She's an eagle. She can fly out. And yet she yeah. will just sit there screaming and shrieking and pull a ripcord. So that's her. Yeah. And don't forget them big metal eggs. <laughs> so. Yeah, I won't. <laughs> and if you do, I won't let you. Anyways. Because <laughs> that was the funniest line. Anyways. No, anyway. So, yeah. Eris, she's a moron. She, like, it's actually kind of pathetic, really, because, like I was saying, with the stereotypes, you have, you know, rhinos are dumb. Gorillas are dumb. They're hippies. Wolves are dumb. <laughs> Ravens are dumb. <laughs> the only smart like, groups in the entire show are the lions and the crocodiles. Yeah, that's kind of true when you think about it. And even the crocodiles are made out to be dumb. <laughs> and then you go on to the site and you go to read and you actually read what these characters are actually supposed to be like. The actual characters... Yup. So Eri- for Eris's bio, I don't know. Do you want me to read the whole bio? Or nah, just, just like condense it. Okay. So basically, it says for Eris, um, most Eagle Tribe members can be a bit airheaded, but Eris is always extremely focused and quick-witted, and loves adventures and puzzles and yada yada yada. And what she lacks in strength, she makes up for with smart. <laughs> 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 and then and then and then this is this is one of my my favorite lines here especially after watching the uh the the show you have to fight eris with your body and your mind because she always has a trick or two of her wings yep the ones that she doesn't seem to actually have that are just inspiration <laughs> <everybody>. <laughs> that's the thing that the episode the first episode starts out with her flying she yeah. can use them she just doesn't no. know when it's also hilarious no because oh no, no if for the purposes of the intro scene she can no. use them other than that they're for no, decoration no, only. No, no, no 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 you're wrong because right after laval knocks Cragger away from her she's about to like wound her and they cut into their chase sequence she's literally like fly hovering and she's like oh no they're headed towards the forest and gorzon's like Oh, that place is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that place is crazy. You know, Meso, I, I, I hate to kind of cut in here, but now that I think about it, he's like the dumb gorilla version of you. Wow. <laughs> I just got compared to a gorilla. I just called that all dumb. And then the worst case, no. scenario, the worst insult of them all, I was just made, a comparison was made between me and a Chima character. <laughs> no, I, I said he's stuff. the dumb gorilla equivalent of you. If you were dumb and a gorilla, that would be you. But you're not dumb and you're not a gorilla. And how is he even like... <laughs> anyway. Because <Okay. laughs> besides the ravens, he's the only one that says things that you would say. So basically... Like that. Eris is supposed to be smart. She's a moron. There's one more glaring character thing, though, and we'll get to him as, in this next bit here. So just to explain a little bit more of the story and kind of lead into this. So all the animals are friends, and then one day, Cragger, irritated with Laval and his rules, says, oh, we should go to the lion uh, temple and break in and try and get access to the chi pool and just kind of look at it. Just look at it. So just look. they do that, and then Cragger plugs some chi, but he's too young, and he can't handle it, so he goes into, like, a spastic fit and, like, gives some guards the smackdown and, like, runs out and, like, 
throws a bear into the sky while he's like still asleep as he's flying and rather than help him Laval and Eris just like swerve out of the way and let him hit the ground painfully and they keep going and then Cragger starts headbutting a tree repeatedly and like eventually the lion leader Lagravis comes and tases him with like a laser gun it was literally like I, I think he tased him but he did it with like a laser so there's that they cuff him Call his parents, and his parents are not impressed. Cracker's parents are Chrominus, the Crocodile King, and Queen Crunket, his mother. Now, Chrominus is supposedly a tough and fiercely protective leader. He couldn't stand the lions, but he always respected them. Or unlike his son, Chrominus ruled with logic and common sense. Instead of emotion. Instead of and book. keep that line right there in mind. Because then when you actually watch the show, Lagravis calls Cragger's parents, and they come over, and they're flipping out. They're going crazy. They're, like, yelling and screaming. Your, your son forced my son into doing this, and he's a bad influence, and we'd like an apology, and you guys are jerks, and the lions suck, and my kid is great, and your kid sucks, and... And my kid is great, and I want an apology, and your kid sucks. Yes. It's pretty glaring when you think about it. Yeah. Now, I'm sure there are others, it's... if you actually look closely. Well, But those two are the only ones that really, like, struck out to me. Well, see, the thing is, is that as far as Krager and Laval, they got those two down, like, yeah. properly. Which begs the question of if they were going to go through the effort of making Laval and Krager proper characters, obviously they can't have the two main quote-unquote characters of the series be unlike what they're supposed to be like. But why wouldn't they just make it so that the other characters who are supposed to be friends and supposed to be part of this group of characters that are the main characters, why wouldn't they put the effort into them too? Yeah, I mean, it's it's... Okay, sure, it might be kind of funny, and I guess if you're making a show for six-year-olds, having every character but the two who are important be really dumb, uh, it might be kind of funny. But, I mean, come on. Even a six-year-old realizes that when something says that this person is supposed to be smart, and then you go watch a show, and that person is completely retarded, no offense to, you know, um, that it's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> LJ, do you think that is wrong? Yeah. No, man, no, 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 no. Mess up. Mess up. Mess up. You guys get in wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> it's super wrong. It's super wrong. It's so, so wrong. It makes me angry. Okay. I do just want to hone in on one thing. While we're talking about characters, because there's, you know, there's really not much more we could say. Obviously, we talk about their character development when we, when we actually get to the next bits of plot. But while we're actually talking about the character group as a whole and how they all kind of suck, I want to call to attention three people. The rhino, whose name eludes me at the moment. Rogan the rhino, there we go. Bladvix the bear. And Skinnet the skunk. These three characters were just, like, introduced because they could... And they never appeared again. Well, no, they, they, the rhino. It was the bear which was sleeping. But rhino appeared at the end. Same with the is, bear. That is true. Skunk I, never appeared again. I guess by that I mean, obviously they planned for those minifigs to be like 2014 sets or else they wouldn't have designed them. But they just had such a minor role. They never even, they were in the final battle. That's the thing. That's what I was getting to. The rhinos and the bears were in the final big battle, yet they never explained whose side they were on. <laughs> and not only that, but they do not exist on the Chima website either. Yeah, I know. Well, it's because they're probably future sets, but still. Well, yeah, but, you know, it's that obvious that they're going to be future sh sets. <laughs> you should at least, you know, throw a bio up. And they never even, like, said... That they, uh, I know for certain they were not on the Croc side because they, Cragger didn't make any mention of them when he was doing like his rallying call, nor were they there. But they also didn't appear when like the lions called for help, 
yet they were just randomly there. Or do they have their own side? Like, the skunk was not well, in the final battle, but the rhinos and the bears I could actually see being, like, their own force. Well, and see, what surprises me is the fact that technically all of the tribes were supposed to be there already. I know, right? <laughs> or whatever, because that's when they were... The final battle was right after they were giving everybody their monthly share of cheese. Nope, that was a flashback. <laughs> no, because then there was there was there was the thing with the chi, right, and then there yeah, was the right. battle. You're, you're right, actually. It was it was pretty much right after. Yep, it goes right after the end of that um, chi thing. Cragger did the rallying call, and then they all started moving out. So. Yep. Okay. Speaking Jeez, of which, Nashville. timelines right. Unlike you, I didn't get just just get done watching the show. Good point. So, okay, next up on the list, we have the next bit of plot progression. So, after the incident with Cragger's parents, Cragger recruits Warriors the Wolf and decides to repeat the thing, and literally yeah. like do the exact same thing he did with Laval for some reason. And they go there, except this time the lions are expecting them. <clears throat> Warriors makes his hasty getaway because he's such a good friend, and then leaves Cragger to clean up the mess. And he like knocks out. The, takes down the guards, runs, makes his hasty getaway too. Sends out a croc flare. So here's where plot progression comes in. He basically signals the entire crocodile army to come like help him. Oh, like he's in trouble. So his parents roll out the troops. They get all the crazy random vehicles going. I spotted a croc tank there. And uh, they had this huge fight. And it culminates when I think it was Crominus that fired the claw poon and like struck Lagravis's vehicle thing. And then they're driving all over the place and through some unimaginable thing, Crominus's tank gets flipped upside down with Cragger and his wife inside. Cragger manages to get out, but they're stuck in there. While Cragger's, like, talking to him, doing stuff like that, Legravis is trying to pull them up and, like, basically use the rope because it's connected to the two vehicles. He's trying to drive away and pull them out of the pit because they're about to fall into a ravine. And not only that, but he's actually almost got them pulled out. Yup. I don't know and, if you noticed Cragger, that, but it was I, at the point where the tank could have started moving on its own again. Yup. And then Cragger is, like, he, he looks over and he thinks they're trying to, like, push them in. Somehow, I don't know how he would think that, but that's what he thinks. He thinks, like, the lions are trying to kill his parents, and he's like, no, I I'll save them, you're not gonna hurt them. And he, like, cuts the rope with his sword, and then there goes that, and they start to fall, and he's trying to do stuff, and he's like, if only I had some chi, I could get the strength to do this, but the lions won't give him the chi to do it, and his parents fall. We think they're dead, only to find out they're just stuck in a cave. Now, keep in mind, obviously this is Lego, and you know, I mean, they're not going to actually kill off characters, because that would be just not Lego-like. Unless it was Bionicle. Yeah. But, in any other story type thing... That would have been the part where the son's like, hey, I just cut this rope and now I'm in control of the mar army and my kingdom is mine and bye mom, bye dad. And that probably would have made Cragger a much more convincing evil villain. That's the thing, One though. That I... Cragger's not evil. It's, but I know. It's his sister. <laughs> I know. A true and yet, main antagonist. It could, they could have just, they should have just left it at Cragger's evil. They should have. Because that's how the bios plant him. Yeah. The bios and all of the stories on the site say that he's just evil. Mm -hmm. Nothing that about I, his sister controlling him. And his mind got messed up. And yeah. That he never fully recovered from having the ultimate power of chi. Yup. For then, we get a quick transition. And to him sitting at the throne and more introduced to the real, the real, true main antagonist. Crueler. The crocodile, his sister. Who has this unexplained magical mind control flower. That 
Basically, it's a repeat of, if you ever watch Ninjago, the Great Devourer's Venom. That if you were injected with the Great Devourer's Venom, like Garmadon was, you'd basically become evil, and there was nothing to do. You couldn't cure it. Though, at the end, we find out you can cure it. But, you know, that was just that. And this is kind of a repeat of that, but at least with that, that had plot relevance, because the Great Devourer was an, was an actual villain at the time, and, you know, that actually made logical sense, and it gave a backstory, kind of, to Garmadon. But the evil flower, mind control flower, just came out of nowhere. Never a reason as to why she has it, where she got it, what it, like, what its actual function is. It just kind of sprays a mist. Does it, like, well, flew people into their, su to certain suggestions, or is it just, a uh, evil yeah. flower turn people evil? <laughs> it's like... Well, you know what? Honestly, you know what? I'm 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 gonna go ahead and say it. There, it's it's one of the two major Deus Ex type things in this. Oh, yeah. Except it's not a Deus Ex. It's worse, because it really serves no purpose other than to make the bad guy a bad guy, even though he's not a bad guy. Yeah, it's like they had no antagonist. So how do we make an antagonist instead of making crueler the actual antagonist and maybe having her try and take control of the armies and do some political stuff to try and sway people to her side or whatnot. We just have an evil flower. So, but again, that. see, the thing is, the thing is, is again, they're going against the bios. Because even the bios say that Krager's just evil. And, you know, like you said, he's addicted to chi and he's never recovered from trying. Oh, God, this sounds so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> trying. He's addicted to chi and he never, never recovered from trying it at an early age. <laughs> 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 See, Lego seems to enjoy going with the whole drug addict banter. Definitely. They did that for Hero Factory. They're doing it for this. Yep. Never really did it for Bionic. Well, did they do it for Bionic? Um, the, 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 the antidermis during. Well, I kind of. Uh, a little bit. No, no, not as much. That was more. Was yeah, that was like very minorly in 2006 with Butaka only. Yeah. So that's a very minor but, thing. These two things consist of, like, the entire plot. Yeah. I just looked up Although, Ruler's bio, and I found an interesting thing. Hmm. It says, uh, obviously, they do paint her as being, you know, the manipulative person. And she's, like, she's oh, yeah. happy to have the power without any of the annoying trivialities and decision-making of official leadership. She doesn't exactly want to overthrow Kragger as much as she wants to manipulate him for her own benefits. She's very good at pushing his buttons and pulling his strings. She knows all his weaknesses and insecurities and constantly plays on them in order to accomplish her own goals and self-aggrandizement. She is truly the most cruel of all the crocodiles. There's no mention of an evil flower. She just knows her brother and can, like, manipulate him. There's no need for an evil well, see, flower. <laughs> yeah. And see, this is where, where you, you start to see kind of how... I don't want to say lazy... But yeah, how lazy the guys who are making this story <laughs> and doing this were. Because you have the bio for the bad guy says that, yes, he's a bad guy. <laughs> and you know what? Okay, I guess I can kind of see, I can appreciate what they tried to do with his character. Because, hey, let's try and make the bad guy seem like he's not a bad guy. But, like, literally, it, it says, you know, there was... There was a time where Krager and Laval were friends and yada, 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 but everything changed when Krager <laughs> had his first taste of chi. Yup. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, Krager was far too young to handle its awesome power. It gave him that sense of ultimate power he had always been seeking. He never completely recovered the from the experience, and this was the end, beginning of the end for Chima's thousand-year age of peace. Yup. So literally... The main reason that he's evil in the slightest is that he's just addicted to chi and he just wants chi. Yeah. So why not just say it? You know, I want chi. I'm going to fight you so that I can have chi instead of making his sister be evil and try and like yada, yada, yada. And yeah, you know, like the, you don't need to bring a flower into it when you can say that, hey, he doesn't want really want to fight them, but then again, his sister's playing with his mind and yada, yada, yada. You can still bring the sister into it without bringing a flower along with it. They initially, oh, they also said on the site that he also had another motivation. It was like he blames the lions for killing his parents. 
thing yeah. is, though, he does. He literally says, "Although it's not the lion's fault," but then here comes the evil flower. So it sounds like they made the bio for post evil flower Cragger personality and not actual Cragger personality. Yeah. <laughs> so, moving forward a bit, his sister does that, convinces him to do this stuff. They abruptly cut to. We're in the second episode now. We're still in flashback mode. They cut to basically Legrevis and Laval talking about the Chi competition or whatever it's called, talking about the history of Chima, how there were these – basically it was all the animals got like hit by lightning or something, and it made them walk on two legs and gain extra intelligence, but some animals chose not to get hit by lightning. Like that's a no, choice. No, 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 no. Oh, no, there was a weird lightning strike in the sky – erupted in light or some shit like that. <laughs> and, Away, yeah, um, it, they pulled out the uh the, the lightning was not what did it. It was the fact they pulled no. out the mountain which started pouring out the chi. And then they drank the chi and then they became chiman. Chimani chimans. Chimans. <laughs> yeah. Chimans. Chimanese. Chimans. <laughs> and then there were some animals that were like, "No, bro, that water smells weird." <laughs> And these animals are apparently <laughs> legend beasts, <laughs> even though I just call them normal animals. So. And now, 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 please bear in mind that yes, legend beasts—that's cool and all. That normal animals are suddenly legendary, but usually don't legends have only one of their kind? When you uh, in in the show, when it shows a scene of the animals leaving, there's only one of every type. No. Yeah. Soldier, what do you think of the normal animals being legendary because they're a normal animal? Stupidest thing. <laughs> I would say, I would say it's the stupidest thing I saw in Shima. It's not. Yeah. It's just Very Kahi, stupid. if he were here, would make the comparison. It's like the Red Star being able to bring the characters back. Shut up, Kahi, is what I would retort with. But no, um, you know, it's it's just they're there to, to to be a plot device. That's it. And they don't do anything special. These super enhanced, highly yes. advanced super beasts can't beat one of them. And so it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. That's well, what, but, but see, I mean, it makes sense and it's kind of cool in the sort of backstory idea of Chima. Because like the Chi... Right, I'm looking at the page on Chi right now, and it says, uh, um, what is it? I'm searching here. Sorry, okay. Um, Chi orbs channel the awesome power of nature into engines, motors, weaponry, and so on. Most inhabitants of China wear a special harness over their shoulders and chest that's specifically designed for holding orbs of Chi. When a creature places the orb into his or her, or his or her harness, the chi gives that user an instant surge of life and power. It enhances that animal's inherent instincts, powers, and abilities, connecting it with its most primal animal state. These yeah. creatures may also experience increased speed, strength, and stamina. So basically, using chi makes you the essential equivalent of what you were descended from, yeah. a.k.a. the legend beast. So in that sense, it makes sense to have the legend beast, and it's kind of cool because... It makes sense. I just found it but... interesting because after Cragger like took the chi and became super powerful, he tried to tackle a legend beast and got the smackdown. Yep. But basically moving things forward a bit, the lions disperse the chi every month to all the tribes, and then they have this one random golden orb of chi that was never explained as to why it existed, and they basically that make people race for it. The most random powerful orb of chi. It's gold. Because it can be, because gold is, like, great. And they make people race for it, and there's, like, a mini competition, and, of course, Laval beats everyone, so he's going to get it until Cragger shows up. And he's like, will you fight me? And he's like, sure. And Laval's dad is like, no, you weren't here when the challenge began. We have rules. You can't do this. And Cragger's like, forget the rules. And then the, his, Laval's father is like, no, Laval, we have rules for a reason. And then Cracker's like, fine, if you won't fight me, I'll find someone who will. And he looks to his right, and here's the, the big scene with, like, Ares, who's just sitting there for some reason. In her motorcycle, even though she wasn't going to joust anyone. 
And he goes like charging yep. towards her, and the wall's like, no. And she's trying to pull the ripcord, and it won't start. And she's like panicking, and she could fly away. Keep in doesn't. mind. Okay, no, out of everyone who got to joust, the rhino got a joust. <laughs> the gorillas, yep. I don't think, got a joust. They did, they did. Did they get a joust? Oh, yeah. The bears, <laughs> yep. who never appear otherwise, got a joust, but the <laughs> eagles did not get to joust for the golden <laughs> sheep. <laughs> yep. That's right. Random characters that no one really knows or care about got to, you know, joust for chi. But the eagle, who's supposed to be an important character for some reason, even though she's really dumb in the show, did not get one. Probably because she's a woman. <laughs> and they're really sexist. <laughs> and I hate to say it, but they're really sexist. You're not allowed to joust. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to joust for chi. You're a woman. Wow. <laughs> and then Laval gets there just in time and so, get like a, a, attacks Cragger and sends him flying away and Cragger leads him into a forest. And then Ares is just like flying and talking to Gorzan and she's like, oh, they're headed into the forest. And he's like, oh, that place is crazy. <laughs> and then we cut to this semi cool moment where there's cool music playing and the speed oars are racing. And they like race for a bit. Somehow they get knocked off the uh, speed oars and then they start fighting. And Cragger pins Laval under a tree and he is about to like behead him. And then here comes Ares with her lolzy line and like in well, see, and, and, and his spear sword she, she, staff. It's it's weird because. Arius in like the Chima bios and stuff, he's got like an axe or something like that. But for some reason, they're like, hey, for this scene, you know what? And I'm going to actually be grammatically correct and call the weapons what they are. She got bolas. Yeah. You know, the, the ball, the two balls attached by like a rope or whatever that wrap around the person's legs and it's like a capture. Yeah. She got those. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure I quoted the line somewhere in the Skype chat. So I'm going to go find it. Because yeah. it was really fun. And, and I'm going to read it slow because it's funny <laughs> until the end. It's funny until the punchline. Okay? Uh, I'm, I'm still looking for it. I, I hate to say it. Okay. 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 So um, if I recall correctly, um, Cragger's about to, you know, behead Laval. Yep. At least I assume he's going to go for a beheading. Yep. And uh, all of a sudden, his spear is tossed away by yep. these bolas, these glowing chi bolas. <laughs> and I believe his response was, what? Who did that? And uh, cut to Ares holding more bolas, I think, or something like that. And th this, this is her line. And I kid you not, this is her line. Quoted exactly. A little birdie did with some big metal and here's here's the kicker guys here's the kicker eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. We're making a dramatic scene. She's throwing eggs. Yup. And what shocks me about this is she's an eagle. She's a female eagle. She's throwing eggs. That just ruins the whole parental idea there. Yup. These Obviously, Chimans are not. <laughs> yeah, they just like throw the eggs. I don't even know why I say that. It's just it, throw the it, eggs as well. Yeah. But but you know, obviously, Chimans are not cut out to be parents. Obviously not. Obviously not. Which explains why some of them are so messed up and addicted to chi and all that. Yes. Yes, LJ. What do you think yes. of this massacre of their young? It explains why they did not get to uh, to, to joust for the chi. <laughs> they keep on throwing our osling. It's like, oh no, the wolves are attacking. Quick, grab little Jimmy. He hasn't hatched yet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> LJ, <laughs> you're not allowed to joust. You're a woman. We have rules <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> wow. What the hell? <laughs> okay so back to i'm sorry everyone's gonna think i'm a sexist i'm really not yeah okay it's just the way 
runs. So she's like, you can't run forever, Cragger, and he's like, oh, running's the last thing on my mind. Meets with war is. They plan to ally the wolves, crocs, and ravens. And here holy, comes... Holy ravens. Yeah, here comes the lulziest scene in the whole thing, because it's all the ravens, like, talking, and there's this one guy, I forget his name, Razor, I think. It's like, standing on a podium, and he's like, oh, I've swindled the crocs out of their trinkets and treasure! Applause. Trinkets! Treasure! Yay! Woo! All, we, all we gotta do is attack the lions. Huh? What? Oh, wait. Trinkets and treasure! <laughs> yeah! Woo! <laughs> that was the only part I found halfway decent. That was hilarious. So that's the whole thing. But LJ get in holy Rizzoli. <laughs> <laughs> and how shway the the ravens really are. No, 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 no. no. It was just that specific scene. I found halfway amusing because <laughs> Drink. I, I don't know why it, it was just you know the, the the disappointment and then sudden uh, joy from those that, ravens. That's what that was in the movie. I mean, when I was like, <gasps> yeah, yeah, no, so Meso is their accountant. I Chima for me. Okay. Meso. Yes. After that he, hilarious he, scene, so he's also the. After that hilarious scene, we get an appearance by a very interesting bird character who uh -huh. has no has no apparent name, though they may have mentioned it somewhere, I forget. And is just, like, randomly there, and he's, like, Cragger's dentist. He's... And he's, like, because he's a bird, he, like, pecks the plaque and stuff off his teeth. And he's, like, lecturing him about hygiene. And then Cragger's, like, can we reschedule? And he's, like, okay. And then he, they get, he gets back to yelling about... We we will attack the lions, and then the bird's like, oh, "He's a good kid. He's just misunderstood." <laughs> but but see, you can take all this and you can be like, "Okay, why is that funny?" Oh, well, I mean, I I never watched Ninjago. I don't watch the Hero Factory specials either. But I think that's the most homosexual character I've ever seen in anything like that. And that's totally me being horrible, a horrible person, but that's just the way he sounded. Yeah. That was the voice. <laughs> it was like a that stereotypical, very stereotypical. No. Yeah. No. I mean, I you know what? I, I, the entire show is... Chima so is just one big stereotype. <laughs> yeah, it's so littered with stereotypes, and it's not even funny. Like, you know, there's always that stereotype... They're a stereotypical character, and it's funny because of it, but when every character is, like, the embodiment of a stereotype, it gets annoying. Yeah, the violent like, and dumb wolves, the greedy and dumb ravens, the sleepy bears, hippie gorillas, dumb rhinos, the scared and helpless women eagles, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, uh, like, yeah, bird, he's, like, eh. But, you know, it's like, eh. it's... I'm almost surprised. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm surprised with like, why? Because last I checked, Lego wasn't prone to releasing stuff that was incredibly stereotypical and like sexist all at once. <laughs> it's Chimo. The only yeah, we female have to take character you. in the it's show just... has little to no role, is completely helpless, and isn't allowed to joust because there are rules <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> It's Chimo, we have to go to new territory. <laughs> but yeah, right after that scene, Cragger rallies the troops, and then finally, finally, the flashback ends. <clears throat> but, not before they feel the need to recap the events of the first episode, because the flashback has been so long, they decided we need to play the events again in, like, short order. They completely change the first scene. Like, I'm not even joking, the first scene with the, the lion pool, like, and Cragger looking- No, no, no. And Laval looking no. for his harness, not only does he enter from the opposite side of the room, but the dialogue is completely different. <laughs> well, no, no but, but Meso, you also have to, to um, remember that that scene that they showed, for whatever reason, was before he went to look for his harness. The show actually opens up with him looking for his harness. Yeah, that is true. And that's the scene flip before- <laughs> But they flip it for whatever reason. I don't know why. It's really weird. And then they like make a couple transitions, and then we're finally back to where we are with Laval looking at Cragger. 
and then they cut away rather than follow up with that, and then they go back to the battle <clears throat> at the Lion Temple. And <clears throat> La Gravis, like, elbows his way to the front of the crowd, lets loose a giant roar, which somehow signifies that all the, the like, the lions need everyone's help. The gorillas get in their mechs, the eagles get in their jets, and they all start gorilla. flying. The gorilla mechs coming out in the summer, it looks pretty shway, if I had to say. Gorzon's Gorilla Striker, because they love strikers for some reason. Because <laughs> so, it's all about striking your opponents with the striker. Yup. So the Gorilla Mechs are in the battle now, and they, like, fight for a bit. Cut back to Laval and Cragger very abruptly, and they're like, Oh, well, what are you doing, Cragger? And he's like, You could have helped save my parents. And Laval's like, No, I could not. We have rules for a reason. <laughs> I couldn't give you, I couldn't <laughs> give you one piece of chi to help you lift. It's the not tank. mine to give. Yeah, it's not it's, mine to give. It's yep. for everyone on Chima. Yeah. And then they get into it for a bit. Cragger's like, is that peace and prosperity you saw back there? And he's like, no. That was you randomly attacking us. That was you attacking us. And then I forget where it went from there. I think Cragger was eventually like, fine. Take your best shot. Show me no mercy. I would show none to you. And then Cragger's like, okay, it's, I'm gonna like stab him in the face. <laughs> and he like does the motion and everything. And then he veers slightly to the left and chops a mark in the tree, which they always use to count things. I think days for some reason. Oh, it was who won? Who won sparks? Oh yeah, who won the sparring matches? So they count those. Who won fights? Because they'd always have like kitty play fights. It's whoever yeah. won. Yeah. Puts a mark in the tree, and he's like, "I'm just like putting one down." And he's like, "Oh, I'm your enemy." And he uh, he's like, "No, you're not. You're just an old friend who's lost his way. You'll come around." And then he's he goes to like pick up the chi and plug it because he never got to. Cragger knocks him into the lake. Makes a comment about how he was always a bad swimmer, so he's trying to drown Laval. <clears throat> Takes the chi, begins to walk away. And Laval's like drowning. And then suddenly, a paw lifts him up. And <laughs> it is revealed. It's a legend beast. They've returned when we dun, need dun, the dun, most. Dun, 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 oh, sorry. They returned because we needed them the most. And they, like, cut to the battle and they're doing stuff. And then um, Cragger and Cooler are talking. And Cooler is like, did you get rid of Laval? And Cragger's like, oh, no, I think I made a terrible mistake, evil flower. Yes, we won't be seeing Laval <laughs> for a while. Or if that, no, ever again. Ha, 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 ha. <clears throat> and then around Insert here... Laval riding in on Legend Beast. Yeah, right on cue, here comes Laval strolling in with the lion. And then everyone... No, he didn't just stroll in with the lion. He strolled in on the lion. Yeah. Two lions. And then everyone starts, like, freaking out. Even crueler. She's like, oh... I never saw the legend beasts before. I'd only heard the great story, Evil Flower. Oh, <laughs> he isn't so tough. He's just, you know. <clears throat> well, he has four paws, like, or something like that. He's exactly the Paw same as us. Of you. Yeah, he's exactly the same as us. He plugs Chi, goes crazy. I'm hyped again because I'm like, we'll get to see the construction figure. Nope, he just is like a spastastic minifigure. All the other animals are bowing to the legend beast. He runs in. He's going to stab him. He leaps up. And the lion just kind of swats him against the wall real easy. And then no, it's not It's not just a swat against the wall. The lion's like standing there. And with one paw, it's a backhand across the face. Yeah. The lion doesn't even move. Only his paw moves. If you look closely, only the paw moves. Yeah. And backhand. then for some reason... Laval decides, I'm going to plug Chi and waste it, even though I'm, it's not necessary because the Legend Beast is here. So he does that, and then a Cragger, like, attacks him, and they get into a very small fight, last maybe ten seconds, and it involves a lot of slow-mo punches. And they do that, and then Cragger's like, I find I surrender, but this is unfair. You get the Chi, the Legend Beast, what do I get? And Laval's like, you get ten seconds to get you and your army out of here. And he starts counting down, and everyone flees. And then Cragger's like, this isn't over. And he's like, you only have five seconds. And then there goes Cragger. And he's like, and he's gone. 
And Laval's father comes to him and he says, You could have destroyed him, you know. And Laval's like, Ah, yes, but the Chi gave me the power not to. And he's like, You truly have become a great lion warrior. And he's like, Thanks, Dan. And then Ares is like, Where will the legend beast go? <laughs> and I forget what they said exactly. It's something like, Where's the legend beast going? Wherever it is he wants to go. And it's like, He'll be, I have a feeling he'll be back yeah. when we need him the most. Because <laughs> Deus Ex Machinas are fun to do. <laughs> legend beast is Red yeah. Star. The legend beasts are hiding out on the Red Star watching over. Okay, are you kidding me? <laughs> The legend beasts are the great spirits. <laughs> the great beings. <laughs> no, 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 no. Great spirits. That's right. They're Matanui robots, but for animals. You know. <laughs> so each legend beast <laughs> holds a universe. <laughs> That's right. Each legend beast is an entire universe in its own. So Shima is a world full of universes. That was Chima. And the plot discussions about it in a nutshell. My closing comments, there's a couple things I really quickly want to address about this that I'm not sure I did. First of all, we've been over the plot, been over the characters, briefly talked about the animation. The voice acting is atrocious. Terrible. The voice acting is some of the worst I've heard from anything recently. I'm not going to say ever because I'm sure I've heard worse, but I... Um, I mean, what? Wow. <laughs> but the voice acting is just terrible. Uh, the only character I liked on, I liked the voice for Cragger sometimes. And then I thought Gorzon was pretty lolzy. And I, li I, I did actually like Lagravis' voice. He sounded pretty shway. But everyone else just flopped. And then a couple things. One, one actual thing. The supposed finality of the ending. So this theme, people have been, the Legos confirmed it's going to be going on for at the very least two years. They've already got sets mapped out for two years. They're already they've already been made. They already have an outline of where it's going. It could go on longer, but two years, so that's four waves, is definite. Why does it seem like they've ended the, the plot? And there's obviously there is potential because Cragger's still king. But Cragger's still king, his sister's still in control of him, his parents are still trapped in a giant hole that we never see from or hear from them again. And yeah. There's not really much they can do though other than mount an attack, which will end in the exact same result. <laughs> but with a different legend beast, Meso. Wow. Because like here's what they did for Ninjago. The pilot was four episodes, they didn't expect it to get picked up into an actual series, but they left it open just in case, and they had the main villain escape through a convenient portal to appear again at some unspecified time in the future. And that's what happened. With this, there's potential, but the sets for the summer are based on this episode. So we're not going to get any more episodes for Chima if it even gets picked up into an actual series until 2014. So there's that, and then will the sets... I guess I would want to wait and see what the sets are. They will probably make rhino and bear vehicles, to be quite honest. But yeah. I cannot... Like, those can just kind of play off of the special. It doesn't necessarily promise anything more. And then there's the weird fact that in the summer, for some reason, they're releasing a set called Skunk Attack. And it's a Speedors. And it is Skin at the Skunk riding a Speedor doing his thing. Yeah, and then there's like the final bit of discussion about like Elda. Didn't you want to talk about like Vaki stabs and the flower and the absurdities of that? Yeah, the uh, flower reminded me a lot of the Vaki staffs in 2004. Yeah, because uh, they were stun staffs by technicality, but they all did something just a little bit different. Let me go to BSO one, get the page up. It's very interesting how similar but not similar they were. Even though, at least with the really Vaki staffs. They, just rewrite. they rewrote your neural pathway. I mean, your brain. I mean, <laughs> your programming. 
I mean, your CPU. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. So, let's see. The page is loading. I'm trying to get all the staff descriptions. Them descriptions. When I, descriptions. When I probably could, you know, just look into an encyclopedia and get them all. Okay, so we have the staff of command, uh, loyalty, erasing, suggestion, presence, and confusion. They all do different things with the same result. Command, basically, it gives you one overriding command. Well, obviously, well, I mean, they're all, what, what, what was it? You were, you were saying earlier that the problem was that you didn't understand the plant, but you could understand the Vaki staves or something like that. You're like, but the Vaki staves make sense. But why is this plant here? Well, you know what? I know why the plant is here. Why? Vaki staff of command, plant of command. Kill the lions. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, staff of loyalty. Make any target who a wholehearted believer in order. S uh, staff of loyalty to killing the lions. <laughs> I mean, plant of loyalty. <laughs> to Belie the, the, the loyalty to Crueler who wants you to kill the lions. <laughs> <laughs> loyalty to killing the lions. <laughs> All right. Uh, the staff of erasing... Uh, temporarily inhibited the higher mental functions of the target. Erase the mental functions that make you not want to kill the lion. <laughs> uh, staff of suggestion. Yeah. I'm suggesting that you should go kill the lion. <laughs> uh, staff of presence. Had the, had the, the Vaki who used it would receive an audio and a visual from any target without the target's knowledge. I'm receiving audio and video telling me to kill people. <laughs> okay, the staff of confusion has the ability to store a target's sense of time and place. My sense of time and space has been confused enough to make me want to kill the lion. <laughs> Confusing my Clearly desire this... to not kill the lion. <laughs> Clearly this plant is all Vaki staffs. Nuparo, your work Nuparo, your work is complete. You've now made something natural. All the Vaki staves rolled into one flower. <laughs> or is it all the flower rolled into Vaki staves? Shock and awe. <laughs> Are those all the staves? That's all of them, yeah. Wow. Then there's the staff of, hey, I'm a plant. <laughs> <laughs> the plant staff. <laughs> No, no, the staff of, hey, I'm a plant, kill the lions. Yes. So closing comments on Chima. What do you guys think? It's abysmal. I, I had um, no real expectation aside this is going to be bad, but I didn't think it was going to be that bad. It made Hero Factory's TV show uh, look like it was rated M for Mature or <laughs> something along those lines. It, it made... <laughs> Um, it didn't really change my opinions on Ninjago and Bionicle. There's nothing really to do there. But uh, no, it, it made Hero Factory look amazing. It, yeah. it was absolutely worse than anything I could have imagined it would be. Yeah. Absolutely blew my expectations further down to the deep depths of the low expectations. I'm glad there's at least some humor that came out of it. <sighs> One <clears throat> scene, in my opinion. One scene was humorous, and that was it. <laughs> I don't know. We've been having some lols about the absurdities. About the absurdities, yes. Kill the lions. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> no. Today is the day we do this. <laughs> what the heck was that? That was Cragger. Like, that was, yeah, that was Cragger. Day we don't do, do this. <laughs> Today is the day we do this. <laughs> <laughs> Can anyone or there's... <laughs> Zero out of 365, boo. Zero out of 365, because that's the amount of days that I'm going to be rewatching this. <laughs> <laughs> At least uh, it was fun. You know, honest, honestly, I was... You know, it's like I said, I'm not really interested in LEGO anymore, so it was one of those things where, eh, I'll watch it just so I can be part of the TTV episode, because it looks like you guys actually needed some people, because nobody else showed up. But, oh. um, you know, honestly... I guess I didn't know why I was going into watching it because I do remember you guys saying that it sucked, but I was like, eh, it sucks. But then again, I'm going to watch it and I'm going to be like, eh, yeah, okay, it kind of sucks, but I can see why it sucks because it's written for six year No, six-year-olds will think that it sucks. Yeah. 
And uh, other than that, I was just kind of disappointed because when I went today and I looked at the uh, Chima site, like the line actually has some promise to it. Like their explanation on Chi and the ex the character bios and on and on and on. It's like these actually have this actually has some promise. There was some thought that went into the premise. The premise yeah, is weird, but it's solid. The premise and the like, like the lore and the background is like it's good. It's like it's kind of like Exoforce where it was good and it actually kind of made sense. But then they turned it into a TV show and they just disregarded everything. Yeah. And it kind of disappointed me. Uh, Actually, no, I can't say it kind of disappointed me because I wasn't really going into it expecting anything, but, you know, yeah. it made me sad. You know, it that reminds me, earlier in the day, I was looking online on Wikipedia, you know, seeing if the reviews had been pouring in, you know, how yeah. people liked it, how they didn't. Apparently, the majority of the criticism was as, uh, like, Thundercats. Now, I personally have never seen Thundercats, ever. I've heard about it a ton, never seen it. So I go on a Wikipedia page for Thundercats, and what I see is a photo of, like, all the main characters. And it was like Laval got turned into an anime character, because I saw someone who looked exactly like him. Yeah. It's pretty... Yep. Eh. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. That. that is on a true. random note, I, I, I'd, I'd just like to quickly point out a couple of things that I was laughing at as I was watching it because I posted them all in the Skype chat and okay. yada, yada, yada. Like my, my, my thing at the beginning, if anyone remembers it, when I was correcting Meso on his quote of Cragger by making it, you know, the strangely bionicle like Greg monologue and yada, yada, yada. Um, I had to laugh. Because, you know, like kids shows, there's always that line or that part of the show that's aimed at the adult audience or like the, the yep. grown up audience sort of idea so that they can get a little bit out of enjoyment out of it, too, and have like a private laugh. Right. Yeah. There was, I mean, mm -hmm. outside of the sexism and just the ridiculous pacing and kind of the overall stupidity of Cragger and everyone and the stereotyping, I had to laugh. Really, 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 really hard. Because even though they failed to make the joke with the whole, like, egg thing that I was expecting them to make, when Cragger and Laval went into the temple, <laughs> I... <laughs> so Cragger is gonna, instead of just looking at the pool... <laughs> He's gonna go, go plug some chi. <laughs> oh, Kitty, you need to calm down. <laughs> oh God, I can't even read it. It's making me laugh. Okay. Anyways, so Cragger is like, okay, let's go. I want to go plug some chi. And his exact, or and then Laval is like, no, we can't. It's against the rules. It's dangerous. Don't do it. We'll get in trouble. And Cragger's response is, haven't you always wanted to feel what it's like? <laughs> <laughs> and then the response from Laval was, no, not yet. Get back. We can't. There are rules. This is really <laughs> bad. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry they're too but... young <laughs> it was funny and amusing apparently it was <laughs> damn it that's so you had to say that <laughs> yep <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> Now he's choking to death. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm gonna have to like make this the start of the video. <laughs> Just Kenny Kenny laughing like crazy. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, I, I don't know. I haven't laughed really hard lately. It's been a long time coming with all of the Chima stuff because it's just so funny. <laughs> yep. That was golden, though, because even though it clearly wasn't even meant to be remotely hilarious to any audience because it was a really serious part of the story, it, it was... It was written in such a way as to make my horribly disfigured brain <laughs> die of asphyxiation from my laughter. <laughs> Aha, I knew you could die from laughter. Yup. Wait. Um, Only wait. because I'm choking myself trying to stop myself from laughing. Wait, what? Hmm. <laughs> but yes. Anyway. That was, that's Chima. <laughs> Overall, I found it so bad I, it was one of those so bad it's good moments i've got more enjoyment from it than i expected to get just for all the wrong reasons yeah. and well no it was everything it was everything we said afterwards that made it funny yeah but no it indirectly Kill. gave me enjoyment there are rules Kill for the reason. lions there are rules for a reason <laughs> but as Drink an it's in treasure yes as an actual sh oh yeah that's why i said give them birth to more lulzy phrases than hero factory specials Anyway, as a show, it's kind of – well, not kind of. It's really bad, and as a follow-up to Ninjago, it's even worse. I'm hoping what they do is they do exactly what they did with Ninjago. Ninjago had a pretty mediocre premise. It was okay. It wasn't great. They turned it into a very well-made series with Chima. They're going to hopefully take a p pilot that completely was terrible and turn it into something that while still inferior to Ninjago is decent. Probably around and the yet, level of the, of Ninjago's pilot, but and yet and yet the premise for Chima is way better than the premise for Ninjago, it as is. far as I'm concerned. And yet, it's it's gonna be the opposite. Watch because they'll make this TV show, and the TV show will get better, but everything else will become so much worse because they'll adapt it to be closer to the TV show. The way the TV show is, Eris will go from being really smart to really dumb overnight. Yep. In a Lego.com update. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we have rules. <laughs> we have <laughs> rules. We, we have rules for a reason, everybody. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is TTV, so screw the rules. Yep. And kill the lions. Kill the, <laughs> screw <laughs> the rules and kill the lions. TTV. <laughs> That's our new TTV. Oh, we're getting flagged for this one. <laughs> TTV, screw the rules, kill the lions and for their trinkets and treasure, and <laughs> happy chi day, everybody. Yep. Mm. Well, I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive review. Go check it out. There are links in the description. It is worth a watch. You will probably come away horribly disappointed or just, like, laughing, but it is worth a watch. And, um... No, you'll, you'll either go come away from it horribly disappointed or you'll come away from it horribly disappointed yet feeling somehow, you know, satisfied because of the amount of things that you can go back and say, that's hilarious, let's make a podcast episode. I mean, what? Yup. <laughs> but yes, hope you enjoyed. Be sure to check it out. And hopefully you'll watch our other videos, whoever watches this that does not watch our regular videos, because there probably will be some people looking for opinions on the episode. And speaking of minifigures... What? No, uh, minifigures? Uh, I'll record that as a separate audio clip, don't worry. Oh, okay. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe. I'm listening. I'm LJ. And I'm Keeney. And this was or TTV Legends of Chiba coverage. And yes, you are Keen. But what if I'm dead, Meso? That's just unfortunate. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> I didn't get See everybody!